so uh, today we're going to be talking about the creation of the Nest Flock and Hatch logos, as well as our mascot, Kalor. Um, so my name is Jess. Um, I'm an intern at the Red Hat offices in Watford, and uh, I focus on the Fedora design part. And I'm currently in college studying Create Computing, though, so this is like my work experience. And uh, I'm excited to be at my first Nest and to present for you guys so i'll hand it over to marie i'm sure you all know who she is but <laughs> she needs no introduction <laughs> there's i'm sure there's plenty of people here who don't know me um, <laughs> hi i'm marie norton i am fedora's community action and impact coordinator but more relevant to this talk is i'm a part of the fedora design team and the fedora badges design sub project and I've been involved in Fedora design since 2013. Um, so long term Fedora designer. And I also have a background in graphic design. I took a concentration when I was in college. Um, so I have lots of artsy-ness in me. All right, here we go. So the first thing we're going to be talking about is just a little bit of background of what I've done uh, coming up to designing the logo. So the first ticket that I got was the Fedora Gaming uh, ticket. So what I was thinking of, because immediately I was like, okay, kind of esports team. And uh, I wanted to do something along them lines, but I also wanted to incorporate the Fedora characters. So I was thinking of, I was looking at different images as well of uh, different esports um, emblems, and a lot of shields are being used. So I incorporated that into some of the designs, especially with the panda and the badger. Um, and then with the badger as well, I kind of did, it, it kind of looks like a, a heavy metal kind of <laughs> logo um but then i kind of went more simpler with a uh, beefy miracle and just did a little circle with fedora gaming um on it so i brought that design then to the fedora discussions team the team and we were kind of deciding which one should we go for and in the next slide then Beefy was the winner of the poll. We did a little poll. So um, this design actually was from uh, another person in the discussions, um, actually worked on it more and created this design. Um, so we made it look more fedora-esque, especially with the circle looking like the, yeah, don't worry, I, I wasn't sure the name. I didn't want to say it if I was wrong. I should have done my research, but yeah. So we went with this logo and um, I brought it then into Inkscape and tweaked it a little bit. So a couple of things I did was I experimented with the Power Stroke feature on Inkscape. So Power Stroke is basically, uh, it just gives you variation in a stroke um just has it you can make it more tapered on either ends and we kind of wanted to give beefy that kind of sketched look as if it was drawn um and then in the buttons then i have pictures afterwards uh, for a closer look but um there's he has little the different colors of the buttons are actually the four foundations colors so we have um friends magenta uh, features orange first green and freedom purple so that's one of the little easter eggs we have in there and of course we had to give him a big smile so <laughs> and so that's just a close-up then of the logo and then i have another on the next slide then is just a close-up so you can see better the power stroke so for example on his well his left arm but it's on our right um you can see the variation then in the stroke and you can see better than the different colors in the buttons so then the net after this the fedora gaming project uh, i found a ticket of the fedora mentor summit we're looking for a logo so my initial sketches were kind of i was thinking okay 
at a summit, you know, you, you meet new people. So I was thinking of the imagery of shaking hands. Um, but I kind of brought it to the design team meetings. We do them every Wednesday. And we were thinking maybe it looks a bit too formal and too much like, you know, making a deal with something. So we went on to the next sketch, which is we changed the form of the hand. So it looks more like you're helping someone up. Um, but we liked the hands idea, but we experimented more with it. So on the next slide, then our one of my lovely team members, Madeline, um, she posted this into the ticket. Um, so these were just alternative designs as well. And I took a lot of ideas from that. And um, it, especially since I was, it was big artist block. So this is really helpful. Um, so I vectorized these designs then in Inkscape and I brought them back then for feedback. And one of the things that came back was that the chat bubbles looked a bit too much like the Fedora discussions or the Fedora chat. So we didn't really go with that design. And then also with the mountain, we were thinking maybe the peak is too high and it might give imagery of kind of being a mentor is too difficult. So we scrapped that too. So we whittled it down then to the hands and the light bulb. So with the hands, I made a design, I made it a more simpler aesthetic. Um, and I used actually the Noun project, which is a brilliant resource for open source uh, icons. And I took an icon from that and made it my own. So I, I did the different colorings and I adjusted it a little bit. And um, so that we have the two hands meeting together as more so of a high five rather than a handshake. And then the sparks in is, I suppose, the excitement of meeting new people and getting new ideas. So that with the next one as well, we have the light bulb. So this is another idea then. So the message of this is kind of like two people coming together to create a really cool idea. And that's kind of the, you know, the, the message of the mentor summit as well. And I have a little Easter egg in the logo and I'm wondering if anyone can spot it. It's quite subtle. <laughs> yes, yeah, so basically I have the little swirl of the F in the light bulb and we then brought back the designs to the ticket and uh, drum roll please. <laughs> so the fedora, the uh, light bulb design won. So that is the uh, current Mentor Summit logo. So next up then we have a little bit about Kalor and his design process. So I'm going to hand you over to Marie to talk about her initial ideas. Cool. So back when we kicked off Nest for the first time in 2020, I realized we needed some art um, and I ripped this up with the help of Marin Duffy, um, kind of in the span of like a week or less. It was a very, it was a very quick process and didn't have a lot of um, community feedback on that one because I'm, you know, doing my, uh, the F cake job and trying to come up with this all at once. Um, and this is what I came up with. Really cute design, but overall doesn't super, super fit with our mascots. Um, we had a character redesign for the mascots. And so I realized we needed a new mascot that would fit along the same, you know, kind of aesthetic and character um, that the other ones had been um, redesigned as. So I opened up an issue on the Fedora design track um, and was like, we need a new mascot for Nest. And then from there, it kind of just grew and grew and grew. We were like, well, the mascot should also be for Flock. And we're also doing Hatch. So the mascot should be for that too. And while we're at it, why don't we um, 
make a Nest logo that matches the Flock logo. I'm not sure if I'm going ahead, but um, I'm just going to stop there and say I thought it would be really cool to, you know, kind of modernize uh, the Nest mascot alongside our others. So then this is where I took initiative of the ticket. So the initial brainstorm really was, I kind of, I we definitely wanted to stick with the pigeon and the bird because it's a, it's a character that we don't have and it was good to stick with it. So I actually found on Google this pink necked green pigeon and it was just perfect. Uh, it has all the fedora colors in it and we we definitely want to go with this bird um so then in the next slide then i just have this is another sketch by our wonderful madeline uh so this was because at the time i was i was kind of i wasn't familiar with drawing characters so i took a LinkedIn learning class on character design and also then Madeline putting this into the ticket as well was really good brain food and I really liked the art style of the bird as well so we kind of wanted to go more with that so then in the next slide then I hadn't this was very early on uh we had I had an idea of like kind of the bird being like Mary Poppins and a mother because like nest and you have the mother looking after their chicks so I created this version of color but it was it wasn't called color at the time but and then <clears throat> excuse me we just I decided to put a hat on because one of um Mary Poppins's things is like her hat and I put a little feather in it because of the bird. But then we were like, hmm, maybe we shouldn't put a hat in, like, red hat stuff. So it was like, maybe not. <laughs> we shouldn't cross that line. So we scrapped the hat entirely. And I went on to do two more designs. So these are the other uh, iterations of color. And I kind of wanted, again, to have that more sketchy feel with the drawing of the... Um, like the shading and blending all the colors in. So I'll hand it back to Marie then for the final decision. Oh yeah, so um, when I can, I stop by the design team live sessions. They happen on Wednesday, by the way, and I think you can find some more information about that on discussion if you'd like to join. Um, I believe we also stream it when, it, when possible. Um, so I think you're able to watch that. I'm not sure what platform that is, but I'm pretty sure that, okay, so uh, Mo is in the chat and um, she mentions that we stream it live to PeerTube. So you don't have to participate. You can kind of just watch and check out what the design team is doing as well. So I uh, joined the design team. We had a chat about this. We talked about, you know, shoe options. I thought that this light colored Ugg boot was very cute and the rest of the design team was on board with that. And we also kind of like the lighter face, right? So like that light, lighter, well, medium blue nose and the kind of lighter eyebrows. We thought it gave uh, like an, a nice character feel and it was nice and bright and light. So uh, I left some feedback on the ticket after that meeting and then I think Jess took the next steps. Yes, yeah, so then I started to vectorize it and create different poses. Uh, I vectorized it using Inkscape again. So Inkscape is an open source software that you can download for free online and it's obviously supported in Fedora as well. So again, I used the power stroke feature on Color to give it that sketchy look and I also used a gradient mesh for the body so a gradient mesh is basically you draw out the shapes that you need and there's different little nodes there and you just click on them individually and you can color them different ways just so you can get a nice 
soft gradient, but not have it like blocky. It's hard. It's hard to explain, <laughs> but um, I use that to create color as well. And actually, the name color, if you don't already know, it's the Irish for pigeon, but it's also color sounds like color as well. And props to Mo for coming up with that as well. So. <laughs> And... I realized I wanted to add one more. Oh, sorry. Are no, 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 you're okay. <laughs> you're okay. Um, I thought we were about to go to the next slide. So I just wanted to say that in the Nest Swag Pack this year, there is going to be a set of four magnets. Um, and they have different color facial expressions. And there's one with the Fedora logo. So this is kind of like, the surprise nest swag pack item that only the 20 people on this call and a couple others <laughs> know about but definitely sign up for that nest swag pack so you can get some color swag great thank you marie so next up we're going to talk about the logo type logos so i'll hand it over to marie then to talk about the old logos Sure. So we've been using this block logo for like a long time. There might be a couple variations on it um, over the years. You know, we've done different art for each one of the events, um, but it's been around for a while and we've used bits and pieces of it. Then we also had the Nest logo, um, just the logo type part that I had designed um, in 2020 for our Nest events. So they're based on the same type base, Comforta, um, but they kind of have a different look and feel. Although we did do similar things with the Flock logo in other places, they're kind of still quite different, right? So at first we were just thinking, oh, let's do something with the Nest logo to match the color or, you know, match the new color that we have. But then I was like, we also have hatches, which is also new, and it needs a new logo. And since we have Flock, the you know big contributor in person conference, we have Nest, the online contributor conference, and then we also have hatches, which are local in person meetups for people to kind of get together you know, safely during a time where it's, you know travel is you know has its challenges in a variety of ways. I said let's design them all together as a family, right? So they all, they're all connected to each other. They're all in this bird theme. Um, so it would make the most sense to design them all at once, give them a refresh at the same time. So I talked with Jess about it. We we're like, yes, let's do it. So I added some updates to the ticket and we were off. So, <clears throat> excuse me. <clears throat> So I'll start off with the Nest logo. So I kind of wanted, I kind of knew what I wanted from the get-go. So I I kind of opt, opted for curves in the N and also in the T as well. We kind of wanted to give that soft feel as well with the curves. Um, I added gaps in between the lettering as well. So reminiscent of the gap in the F of the Fedora logo. I kind of wanted to tie that in as well. Um, I also wanted each logo um, to tell a story by having a symbol incorporated into them. So one of the ideas that came up in the in a, one of in our meetings was a, a tree idea, and it made total sense because birds live in trees and nests are in trees. So I came up with a little sapling uh, to put on top of the T and we kind of went from there there was a lot of failures like especially the one on the top like connecting the E and the S like looking at it now I'm like what what was I thinking <laughs> you know because <laughs> that's the great thing as well about design you always go back and redo it as well and make different iterations and get loads of feedback and yeah so then next with the Flock logo, there was 
same as the Nest logo, I, I had a good idea of what I what I wanted to do for it. Um, so the feather idea came from birds of a feather flock together. And I was like, ooh, feathers flock, that will work really well together. So I created this little design with the two feathers coming out of the F and the K. Um, we had an idea as well to maybe do them different colors. So like each each feather is a different color. Um, but I mean, it can, it can still be a thing, <laughs> but that was a sketch. Um, so I went back and got some feedback on it. So the feathers were looking a bit like leaves. Uh, so we, I just added little tufts to the end of them just because, you know, when you see a feather, there's like little fluffy bits at the bottom of it. So I added them and we also, I suppose, inverse the color. So the inside was a block color instead of having it just an outline. Um, so that, and it was easier to read as well. So that's what I did for the flock logo. And then for the hatch, there was a lot of experimentation with the hatch logo. We were quite, as at the start, I was like, oh yeah, okay, nest, flock, that's fine. Have them done hatch. Oh, I, <laughs> I had no idea. So we created, as you can see, a lot of different designs. Um, so I definitely wanted to do something with the A uh, because it was the the one thing that symbolizes symbolized an egg more. Um, so one of the ideas was to put a break in the A, especially since a lot of them have uh, breaks in different places. Like with the nest, there was a break in the N and the T. So I wanted to add one to the A, but I want to do it in like an eggy way so like make it more sort of a crack um and then there was other iterations where instead of doing the normal a that's in the comforta um type uh, to do instead uh, just a normal a um but we went through a lot of ideas anyways and then we were we were thinking Oh, we had a bird, we do. So the final um, hatch logo then was, we just made the the A into an egg shape. Uh, so on the next slide then, we have all the different logos together. Um, so we came up with this, we have the negative and positive space with the crack and the egg. And then I used, um, what's, it's, it's not open source, but it's, it, it's, um, it's called Procreate on iPad, and there's a thing you can use where it actually stretches the, um, it just morphs the shape of anything you want. So I use that to morph the shape of the A, and that's how we got the egg. So looking at these logos now, you think, oh, they're really cool, and they look really well. But from my perspective, there was definitely a, a good few flaws, I'd say. So thank God Marie came to the rescue and uh, showed me a little bit about the essentials of logo type and how we really refine them. So I'll pass it over to Marie. Cool. So part of my background in graphic design is calligraphy and typeface design. I actually have like a TTF of a typeface called an ordinary um, and I learned a ton about um, how to design typefaces so when I saw the logos I was like these are awesome this is a great basis but we got to get in here I'm noticing some inconsistencies right so just going to give one example here so what you want to do when you're designing a logo is keep similar shapes the same throughout the typeface or the logo type or whatever you know you're trying to design with lettering so you see on the left what I did was a comparison of the H from the hatch and the N from the nest and both of them share that same shape of the round kind of piece that's coming off I know there's a technical name for it I'm not sure what it is right now um, but as you can see just 
you know, changing the opacity, it could be the bowl, um, you see that they're not lined up, right? So the pink is kind of in different places than the blue. So I did a demo for just kind of showing how to copy and paste or, you know, keep those elements the same throughout. So we did that for a variety of the letters. I think we did the C. Um, I want to say we also did the T. There was different spacing between the gaps. Um, so just to make sure that it looked cohesive as a whole. So then these are the refined ones. Um, they just look a lot cleaner. So there's the nest one. Um, the flock one, it was more so the C because when I did these, I just did them all in individual strokes rather than using the actual typeface. So I used the, so for the O and the C, I replaced them with the actual converted typeface. Um, and then the hatch as well, the C was a bit iffy and especially with the H so we cleaned them up and made them really nice looking so so what's next so basically so this is just a conclusion so the flock logo will be going on the new flock website um, and these logos will be used for events e.g. the nest event and blog posts um, the hatch logo has already been used in the Bruno event that's coming up next week and it was also used in Cork uh, there two, three weeks ago so and then as Marie mentioned as well Colora will be showing up on all sorts of swag <laughs> so we can't wait to see what will come from them so Thanks so much. And if anyone has any questions, we have a minute. <laughs> we, can go, we can go over a little bit. We actually had, okay. we had a cancellation. So um, of some somebody had to move their session to tomorrow. So the next schedule is not double booked. So if people have questions, feel free to ask them. How long does one sketch usually take to complete from initial to final? Um, they were all kind of different. So, like, for example, the Fedora Gaming, I know that was, I'd say that took about a month to do because I did the initial sketch in, like, two, two days, I'd say, or a day or two, and then we brought it to the discussions page and there was... It's it's public, so you get all sorts of comments. Uh, <laughs> but um, we came up then with a final sketch. I I think it was a month afterwards. Um, but then I think the Fedora Summit logo took that long as well. I know the longest one was the Nest Hatch and Flock. I think Color took the longest because I had heavy artist block. I couldn't think of anything. Um, on how to sketch it and I was really unsure but then once I got inspiration and I was I flew through it so excuse the pun uh, but uh, it was it all depends really on what it is and what I have like if it's a really big interest I I could be like a week two weeks three weeks done but if it's something I'm really stuck on it will take longer so that's my my um production process I suppose I think it depends on the urgency of the project yeah and that too yeah <laughs> <laughs> that's a big one as well <laughs> like uh, I got it like for example for that nest uh the nest 2020 I did it in like a week or two I think I did the fedora week of diversity um logo in like a couple weeks as well um because, hey, we just needed some graphics for the event. Um, but sometimes you can, you know, take as long as you want. Um, you know, I've worked on designs for months at a time. So I also think what, you know, what the application is. Is it, um, you know, something like a 
for example, a typeface that's going to be used for years and years and years, you could spend a year designing something like that. So I think the application of where it's going to end up also makes a difference. Yeah, I agree with that as well. And urgency is a big one. But when I was starting, I started in January and then I was part time until June. So it was more so just kind of going through the the tickets and see what I like. So I took my time on them and I don't think there was a big rush. Um, but then with the nest and that was when I was more full time and there was a bigger demand for it. So, um, sorry, I'm just looking at a at most common. Yes, yeah, so gradient mesh is great, but it's it's not really supported in many places. Um, so, um, so what what tools did I use in the designs long journey? So mostly for the vectorization. So that was all Inkscape. Um, and the sketching process was an app called Procreate that I used. Um, it is, I wouldn't say it's proprietary, like you only have to pay for it once and that's it, but it's still, it's not open source. Um, however, there is an open source um, one that is really good called Autodesk Sketchbook. It's free to download on any tablet. But I think if you want like extra pens or something, you do have to pay. But it's a very good app to start off. And that's what I used when I had like my first tablet and I was sketching little things. So yeah, but for all the designs that I used, it was Procreate. So they were the two two big, big tools that I used. So. Any more questions? I think we might we might be good. Well, I here. want to say a big thank you to you, Jess, for doing all the work on Cooler and these logos. You did an amazing job. So thank you. Thanks so much. Of course. <laughs> I had fun working on it, so it yeah, wasn't even that. yeah. So thanks. Work is the best when it's fun. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> All right. Well, I think that's it for today then. Yeah. Thanks so much for, for joining. And thank you, Marie, for co-hosting with me as well. Of course. All right, people. See you around. <laughs>